fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hey! In the town of Choctaw Pass, the Lone Ranger was known only as a mysterious masked man who had ridden into town and turned Moose Mitchell, a notorious killer, over to the sheriff. With the prisoner, the masked man had handed over an envelope containing photographs and other evidence that was certain to result in a verdict of guilty when Mitchell went on trial. The day of the trial dawned bright and clear, and the small courthouse was crowded. It was a big day in the life of the shrewd, conniving lawyer, Rodney Fox. Hi there, Mr. Fox. I hear you're aiming to defend the killer. I am counsel for the defense. And please bear in mind that my client is an innocent man until he's proved guilty. Hi, Fox. I guess this is the day you break your record of never having lost a case. That is for the jury to decide. They tell me it's an open and shut case against Moose Mitchell. Sure it is. The sheriff's got evidence enough to hang him a dozen times over. Merely hearsay, gentlemen, merely hearsay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll take my place. I think the court is about to open. Say, Pete, just what is the evidence against the prisoner? Have you heard? They tell me that masked man had photographs of footprints right outside the bank where the murder took place. Photographs? You mean pictures made with one of them newfangled black boxes? Just so. And there's affidavits to prove them footprints was made at the time of the robbery and that the footprints match the prisoner's boots. There's other evidence, too. Whoever that masked man is, he sure did a complete job of sending moose to the gallows. I don't know. Foxy Fox is too blame confident of winning. I wonder if he's got something up his sleeve. Fox? I don't see what he can have up his sleeve in this case. Yeah, me neither, but he's a shrewd critter and hey, I... Hey, Pete, huh? look over there at the sheriff and Prosecutor Lawton. They're acting squirmy. Hmm. They sure don't look anywhere as confident as they did yesterday. Well, I... Hey! Hey! Quiet down, all of you! Hank, you take your hat off. Let him put out that plan. A court is hereby open for the case of the people versus Moose Mitchell. Judge Wilkins presiding. We're all set to go, Judge Wilkins. Mitchell's an ugly-looking coot, isn't he? Sure is. Judge, I've got to speak to you before you start things. Uh, take it easy, Lawton. Go back to your place. You too, Sheriff. Uh, but, Judge, you better listen to the prosecutor. The evidence is gone. What? It was stolen from the sheriff's office. 
Someone broke in and stole it last night. Sheriff, is that right? Yes, that's right, Judge. Someone forced a lock on the door and busted into my desk and cleared it out. Why wasn't I told about this before? Uh, we just found it out a few minutes ago. Oh, fine thing. Your Honor, I couldn't help overhearing this whole discussion around the bench. You don't miss much, do you, Fox? <laughs> no, indeed. Sheriff, is it true that you have no evidence against my client? Well, we did have. But you lost it, huh? It was stolen. Judge, we still have a witness to testify for the prosecution. Milt Cummings. One witness. <laughs> Are you ready to carry on the prosecution with the testimony of a single witness? Judge, I... I would like an adjournment of a few days or a week to, uh, to prepare my case. Your Honor, Be I... quiet, have... Fox. This court is adjourned till one week from today. Thank you, sir. Now, Sheriff, take the prisoner back to his cell. See that you don't lose him. Your Honor, may I have a word with my client before he's removed from the courtroom? Well, go ahead and talk to Mitchell. But make it short. Hey, now, see here, Fox. You told me I'd walk out of here free man. Just be patient, Mitchell. But they're not turning me loose. They're just postponing the trial until next week. Don't worry. They'll have that witness to testify against me. And maybe by next week, the evidence will turn up. That evidence won't turn up anywhere at any time. It's burned. Well, just the same Milt Cummins can tell plenty about me. He won't talk. I'll take care of him tonight. And I'll guarantee he won't testify against you. Now, you sit tight, Moose, and don't you worry about a thing. Let me handle Milt. It was after dark when the Lone Ranger and Tonto camped at the edge of Choctaw Pass. Tonto went into town alone to learn the outcome of Moose Mitchell's trial. He returned to camp with the astonishing news that the evidence had been stolen and the trial postponed. Are you sure of that, Tonto? Ah, uh, me plenty sure. Someone steal evidence from Sheriff's office. Another trick of Rodney Fox. Trial next week instead. Yeah, she told me. There'd be just one witness to appear against Mitchell. Milt Cummings. That's right. I'm going to call on him right now. Steady there, Silver. With Mitchell's conviction, depending on Milt's testimony, we must make sure that testimony is heard in court. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Silver! Milt Cummings lived alone in a small one-room building. He was ill at ease in the presence of his well-dressed visitor, the suave attorney, Rodney Fox. Well, there you have it, Milt. You're going to say you were mistaken about Moose Mitchell and can't identify him. But that, that's not true, Fox. I saw him rob the bank and shoot Mr. Moser. Milt, I'll go a long way to get him acquitted. But you know he's a crook. Not until convicted. You probably can tell who stole the evidence. I have a good memory. I can remember just what happened five years ago. Now, no, wait, wait, Fox. How would you like to face the hangman? Oh, you couldn't prove it. Well, yes, I can. And there's no statute of limitations on murder. If you testify against Mitchell, I'll see you hang. Oh, Fox, if that's the way it is, I can't stop you. But I've got to give my testimony. Now, Milt, what's the use of being stubborn? What's the good of it? Do you think the folks around here are going to thank you for testifying? I've got to do it. Mitchell's bad all through. I'll make him promise to leave the state. Then we'll be saved all the trouble of holding him in jail or... So he can rob and steal from folks somewhere else? No, nothing doing. You went straight after you killed a man... Give Moose a chance to do the same. He's had too many chances. Do you think you're the only killer that's got a right to live? Well, now, it's different in my case, Fox. You know, blame well it's different. Why, ah, you fool. Hey, 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 who's that? Finish it, Mr. Fox. You'll do what? What's this to you? Who's this masked man? Milt, you went into the law here as you have pals who wear masks. I, I don't know him. Milt never saw me before. Who are you? I'm particularly interested in seeing Moose Mitchell get what's coming to him. I'm the man who gathered the evidence that's been stolen. You? What are you doing here? When I heard about this afternoon's trial, I decided to call on the state's key witness. I guess you had the same idea, huh, Fox? <laughs> well, what are you going to do now? Go and call on the sheriff wearing a mask? I'm going to take Milt where you can't reach him. You're taking me nowhere. Come on, Milt. You keep away from him. Fox, don't get in my I'll way. I'll get in your way you now. Oh. Great day. I warned you, Fox. 
Are you ready, Milt? Well, where do you figure on taking me? To a camp where a fox can't find you. Uh, why? I want to talk to you without being disturbed. All right, Milt, dismount. Gosh, what a horse. Dotto, this is Milt Cummings. How? What happened, Kimasabi? Fox is afraid to let Milt testify in court. Uh, look, mister... Milt, I heard some of your conversation with Fox. Can he hang you? He... Well, even if he could, it wouldn't stop me from having my say in court. The man Moose killed was my friend. Nothing will stop me from giving my testimony. A bullet would stop you. Huh? And Fox might use one if he has to. Uh, what are you getting at? You're going to stay here in this camp until the trial. Well, uh, if uh, you'll tell us what Fox has on you, perhaps we can help. No, you can't help me. Neither can anyone else. I'm a murderer. I'm a man that thought he could get away with murder. I've thought so for these past five years. Now I see it can't be done. When Milt was not seen in town for the next few days, it became rumored that he had run away rather than appear to testify at Mitchell's trial. There were many bets on the outcome of that trial, and the odds in favor of the prisoner increased with each passing day. Well, hey, uh, Barkeep, you hold the stakes. Right. I tell you, boys, Fox is looking more confident every day. Do you think Milt will show up for the trial? I don't know. Prosecutor Lawton is looking downright worried. It wouldn't surprise me if Fox knew more than he'll tell about the stolen evidence. Hey, boys, don't clutter up the bar unless you buy drinks. My money's all gone into bets. Uh, Barkeep, give me a small beer on credit. They don't come that small. Now shove on. Main trouble with being broke is that you can't raise an on him, so... Yeah, Prosecutor Lawton will just come in. Maybe you could borrow some cash from him. Not a chance. He's going over to Judge Wilkins' table. Judge Wilkins, they told me I'd find you here in the cafe. Uh, hello, Lawton. How's your case coming? Judge, I've got to ask a favor of you. A favor? Just one minute, Lawton. I'll tolerate no collusion between the prosecutor and the judge. Nonsense, Fox. I merely want to ask for a further postponement of the trial. A further postponement? What's the matter, Lawton? Judge, you know how the whole case against Mitchell depends on one witness. Yes, I know. I can't find that witness. I've heard something about Mills' disappearance. Without him, I won't have a case. You have two days for the trial. I... I'm afraid a couple of days won't be enough time. I object to any further delay. My client is entitled to his day in court. You can't keep him in jail indefinitely. Fox, you know very well your client should hang. Every man is innocent until he's proved guilty. Judge, don't Gordon, you... Gordon, here's the situation. I'm speaking unofficially. Moose Mitchell is a murderer, a thief, and every inch a skunk. It's my personal opinion, he should have been strung up a long time ago. Judge Wilkins, That's the you talk. can't say those things about my client. You shut up, Fox. I said I was speaking unofficial. Now I'm going to speak officially. Yes? Moose Mitchell is a citizen of this country, and as such, he's entitled to a fair and impartial trial before a jury of his peers. He's got a right to his day in court. We can't hold him indefinitely without bringing him to trial. Besides that, it costs money to feed a prisoner. The day of the trial has been set, and it's got to stand. But, Judge, the whole case against him hangs on the testimony of one man. And produce that man in court. I've got to find him. If you'd just give me more time. No, I'm sorry, Lord. Judge Wilkins, the people should be proud of a man like you. I'm happy to know my client will get a fair and impartial trial. You'll get that. I contend that Moose Mitchell is just a poor, unfortunate individual against whom fate has always stacked the cards. Ah, uh, hogwash. Moose Mitchell is the biggest crook that ever lived. What? But he'll get his trial on schedule. And if Lawton can't make a case against him, he'll walk out of court a free man. And live to kill some more. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was two days before Moose Mitchell's trial when the attorney, Rodney Fox, went to the jail to call on the prisoner. He met the sheriff in the outer room. I'll unlock that door for you, Mr. Fox. Thanks, sir. Any word of Milt Cummings? That's it. I understand the prosecutor has a lot of men out looking for him. He sure has. Uh, I'd step right into the cell, Mr. Fox. I'll have to lock you in while you talk to the prisoner. That's all right, sheriff. Just uh, stay away from the door. Don't try to hear the confidential talk between a counsel and a client. Uh. <laughs> Fox, what's new? Lawton wanted another postponement, but I persuaded the judge not to grant it. You'll be tried the day after tomorrow. No word of Milt Cummins? No. Oh, you'd better find him. Make sure he don't talk in court. If he tells what he knows about me, I'll hang. He's disappeared. No word of him since that masked man slugged you and made off with him, no. huh? No. Yeah, that cussed mask man. If it hadn't been for him, I'd have never been captured in the first place. If I ever get out of here, I'll deal with him if it's the last thing I do. Does uh, anyone else know the masked man got milled? No. No one. He's holding him someplace, Fox. He'll have him at court in my trial. You see if he don't. <laughs> I'm not worried. I can discredit anything Milt Cummings says. I can prove he's a killer. Well, get this straight, Fox. You better make sure I go free. Don't threaten me, Moose. I'm just telling you, that's all. If I go free, I'll pay you handsome. But you don't get a thin dime if I'm convicted. I know that. And what's more, if the case goes against me, I'll tell a few things about you. Why? Among other things, I'll let the judge know it was you that stole the stuff from the sheriff's not office. so loud, you jughead. And that's not all. So you better see that I go free. <laughs> The Lone Ranger, wearing a disguise, had spent the day in town to make sure the trial would be held on schedule, whether or not Milt Cummings was found. It was after dark when he removed the disguise, replaced the mask, and started back to his well-concealed camp in the woods. Milt Cummings was asleep. The masked man and Tonto unsaddled the big white stallion and took seats near the small campfire without waking the prisoner. Did you learn anything from Milt, Tonto? No. Nothing new. And what you learn? The trial will take place on schedule. That good. Mills will be there to tell his story. But Tonto, after he tells it, Fox is going to turn on him with everything he's got. Mm, that's right. Mills may have made a mistake once in his life. He doesn't deserve what Fox will give him. Uh, He'll only tell us what Fox is holding over his head. Him not trust us that far. He's afraid of giving us the same hold over him that Fox has. Uh, Sleeping uneasily. He muttered several times in sleep. Worried. Steady, Milt. Gonna get square. What am I saying? Wait, Toto. Can't blame me for killing Slim Beckett. Did you hear that? Ah, him say Slim Beckett. Slim Beckett. Milt, wake up, Milt. Wake up. Oh, uh, what? Wake up and listen to me. Oh, what? What's the matter? What about Slim Beckett? Uh, Slim Beckett? Yes, what about him? I I don't know anything about him. I, where'd you get that name? Give me the truth, Milt. You talked to Fox. No, you talked about Slim Beckett in your sleep. Oh. Is he the man you killed? You know about it? I know something about it. I want to know the rest. There's nothing more. I killed Slim Beckett. Now you know as much as Fox. You killed him? I may as well admit it. It'll come out anyway. Can Fox prove you killed Beckett? Yes, yes, he can prove it all right. He's got a dying statement from Beckett. He's held it all these years. Hello, give me a hand. I've got to saddle up and ride fast. Well, what's up, mister? Uh, me help. Just one full day before the trial. If I can find what I want, you'll have nothing to worry about from lawyer Fox. Uh, here, Silver. Hey, here's a saddle cinch up. Uh, Steady there, Silver. Uh, where, where are you going? Amaranthe County. You stay here until the day of the trial. And you go to court and tell your story. Put Moose Mitchell where he belongs. And don't be afraid of anything Rodney Fox can say or do. Uh, Silver ready now. Good enough. Easy, big fella. One Silver! The Lone Ranger rode through the remainder of the night and most of the following day, pausing only long enough to rest and water the powerful horse Silver. It was sunset when he finally reined up at the county seat in Amaranthe. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady, big foot. A man wearing a sheriff's badge rushed out of the office with a gun drawn. Hold on there, I got you covered. Don't reach for a gun. Put that gun away and go back into your office. I want to talk to you. About what? A man who was killed. His name was Slim Beckett. The 
following morning found the courtroom jammed just as it had been on the previous occasion. The same people were in court, and they said practically the same things to lawyer Rodney Fox. Hi there, Mr. Fox. I hear you're aiming to defend the killer. I am counsel for the defense. Please bear in mind that my client is an innocent man until he's proved guilty. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll take my place. I think the court's about to open. <laughs> Fox is just as confident as ever. Only more so. He should be. Without Milt Cummings, there's not a bit of evidence against Moose. Yeah, sure riles me to think of that killer being turned loose. Me too. Look at the grin on his face. Yeah. Guess Fox must have told him Lawton couldn't locate Milt Cummings. Are you sure Milt won't turn up at the last minute, Fox? Can't be sure of anything, Moose. But don't you worry. Even if Milt does show up, I've got what it'll take to fix him. Well, you better have. If Lawton had anything against you, he wouldn't look so worried. Look at him talking to the sheriff. Well, they can hold the right now, I'll bet, can't they? You did let me down, Sheriff. You let me down twice. Now, I did the best I could, Lawton. Oh. I had every available deputy scar in this country on all sides, and they couldn't find hiding or hair of Milt Cummins. You suppose Fox did away with him? How do I know? I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, nor I. But there's no use charging him with anything you can't prove. Here comes the clerk. Well, it won't last long. Hey, hey, Fire down, all of you. And take off your hat. Let him put out that pipe. The court is hereby open for the case of the people versus Moose Mitchell, Judge Wilkins presiding. We're all set to go, Judge Wilkins. Yeah. Uh, what? It's Milt. Milt Cummings. Sheriff, Sheriff, get that man. That's my witness. Order! Order in this court! Milt, we want you! Quiet! I want a recess. Judge, Your Honor, I want a recess for ten minutes. Quiet down or I'll clear the court. Quiet down! Quiet down in here! Your Honor, may I speak to you for a minute? Hey, what is it, Fox? In view of the fact that the state seems to have an unexpected witness, I'd like to have a few minutes alone with the state's attorney. I think I can save the court a lot of time. And I'd like a few minutes alone with Milt Cummings. Yeah, just a minute now, one at a time. I, too, would like a few words with Cummings. He's not your witness. Nevertheless, I want to talk to him. Quiet! I'm calling a recess right now. I want to see all of you in my office. <coughs> Straighten this out. Go on in there, Milt. You yes. too, Fox. You, Lawton. Come on, Milt. Hey, what about me? This is my trial. Now you keep still or I'll take you back to the jail the way. Go on, Milt. Step right in the judge's office. Yes. After you, Judge. Yeah, thanks. All right, find yourself some chairs and sit down. Uh, yes. <laughs> Milt, where have you been? Sheriff's been looking all over for you. I dropped out of sight for a while, that's all. You're going to testify against Moose Mitchell, aren't you? I sure am. Now, I've got things against him that'll clinch the case. Good. Now, just a minute, Milt. I, I didn't want to make any trouble for you. I feel you've been an honest citizen for the past few years, and I hope to let you stay that way. What are you talking about, Fox? Your Honor, my first duty is to my clients. What's that got to do with it? If Milt Cummings takes the witness stand... I shall have to discredit him as a witness against Moose. Discredit him? You can't do it. Oh, yes, I can, Lawton. Can't I, Milt? Well, I... Milt, I... what's the matter with you? Well, Mr. Lawton, I'm afraid Fox can do what he says. But that won't affect what I have to say against Mitchell, will it? I... I don't know. Of course it will. The jury will hardly believe a murderer. What's that? A murderer? Yes. I admit it, Lawton, I... Killed a man once. I have but... proof of it right here in my pocket. Well, of all the This does... is the statement of a dying man named Slim Beckett. He names Milt Cummings as the one who shot him. It was self-defense. But I suppose it's too late to try and explain. She'd have known I couldn't get away with it. Hey, what's going on out in the courtroom? Sounds like some sort of excitement. Hey, the judge! Sheriff! I'm going to see you right away. Come on, Mitchell. I'm keeping you handcuffed to me. I ain't even trying to pull my arm Close off. Close that door. What's going on out there, Sheriff? The mash man just came in. Why? Yes, sir. He had the sheriff of Amaranthi County with him. They gave me a couple of papers and said you should see him right away. Well, he promised to help well, me. Let me see those papers. Well, this here is just a handbill offering a reward for the capture, dead or alive, of a critter named Slim Beckett. Oh, no. Slim Beckett? Beckett. That's the man I killed. I didn't know he was wanted. Fart, you fat-faced fool. Now, you fat... shut up, Mitchell. You get your say in open court. If Beckett was wanted by the law... Then Fox can't discredit you. Instead of that, he'll make you a hero on the stand. How about that, Fox? Well, you I... You remember what I told you, Fox? 
If I don't go free, I talk. Mitchell, keep still. With what I'll tell you, we haven't got a chance in a million of going free. If I what don't... What about that other paper, Jerry? Listen to this. Fox, here's something for you to explain. You laid claim to the reward for killing Beckett. He did. That reward was paid to you on May 10th. This is a sworn statement from the clerk at Amaranthi. Well, no wonder you told me to keep quiet. You didn't want me to mention killing Beckett. If I had, someone would have said you got the reward. Fox, you're a crook at every turn. It looks like you owe Milt Cummins some money, eh, Fox? I, uh, we'll deal I, with uh, you after we finish with Moose Mitchell. You finish with me and you can finish with Fox, too. I'm through with that flabby mouth, smooth-talking fool. He stole that evidence from your office, Sheriff. Moose, sir. Yeah, he's done it all right. All right, Ginger, we can put Fox himself on trial. Hey, you bet you can. He gummed up my defense. Well, let him hang with me. You won't get me. The window. Stop him. Get him. Get back there. The oh. masked man. He's outside the window. Great day. My leg. My leg is shot. Me. Yeah. <laughs> he shot you. Now you can see what I learned. When that masked man's out to get you, you're through. He's a lone ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.